Five Nights at Freddy's, the game that took YouTube, Let's Players, and apparently Hollywood by storm. And because it exists, there is, of course, a pony version of it. And because there's a pony version of it, there's a pony fan fiction about it, which we are reviewing today. But of course, we can't review a Five Nights at Freddy's crossover fan fiction without actually playing the game. So without further ado, here's my co-host, Joel. Why the phone version? Does it look like I'm made out of money? It's five bucks on Steam. Well, maybe if we started that Patreon we discussed, then maybe we c- This is Five Nights at Pinkies. This story revolves around Jack Black, I mean, uh, Jet Black, who just got out of pony prison for a crime that he didn't commit. Now, in order to get his life back on track and win back the trust of his old friend Fluttershy, he takes on his former job as night guard at Pinky's Pizzeria or something, something. However, things have changed this time around. Now, the animatronics roam the halls at night, killing those who get in their way. Will he survive the five nights, or will he become yet another victim in the demented restaurant? How the hell do you even play this freaking game? Once again, this story was brought to me by the author, who saw my videos and said, Gee, I want this guy to review my story and expose all the flaws in front of potentially hundreds of people. And you know what? I respect that. I respect those that are brave enough to have a piece of work that they've poured their blood and tears into and offer it to some random dude on the internet, risking utter humiliation. It's that kind of attitude that makes me... Oh boy, you're stalling. Well, it's, um, it just states that it's, um, um, let's start from the top, shall we? This is ultimately a story about a guy who made a terrible mistake went to prison, and is now trying to put his life back together, while also fighting both evil robots and his own destructive memories. I like this. This is the kind of stuff horror movies are made out of. At the end of the story, it's revealed that Jet was forced to murder five kids, an event that was mirrored from Five Nights at Freddy's. In order to cope with what he has done, Jet repressed these memories. However, at the end of the fifth night, when all is lost and he's cornered by the evil animatronics who are possessed by the spirits of these kids, Jet finally accepts what he has done and begs for forgiveness. This pleases the spirits who let him live, and soon afterward, Jet finds the man who blackmailed him and feeds him to the angry spirits. I love how our main character has to deal with these incredibly dark, repressed memories. I mean, this is some serious Edgar Allan Poe crap right here. I also love how Jet got the opportunity to redeem himself and bring justice to the man ultimately responsible. Also, I like how our main character actually has a reason for sticking around. Jet could have easily left, but he's given the choice, leave and live, or stick around and beg the ultimate waifu. The motivation is there, which I really can't say about the source material. Uh, worth is oh, 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 there's a thing after me. So based on the plot alone, I like this story. However, it has one critical flaw. Everything is too damn rushed. This is a 1500 word story which is pretty good for a one-shot, but this is no one-shot. There is a lot going on in this story, and there's so much more I want to know more about. For example, 
I want to know more about Jet. It seems like everybody likes him, but why? Was it because he's funny? Because that sort of seems to be his gig. He also says that he's changed, he's changed, but what does that mean? If what he did was an accident, don't you think he would be going, you know I didn't do it, right? You know I didn't mean it, right? I want to know more about what he was like before the incident. That way, when he has his moment of redemption, his arc will come full circle. I mean, was he a careless jackass before? Because that would kind of make sense. Then there's the relationship with Fluttershy. It's a nice idea, and it gives our main character a good motivation, but that's it. It's nothing but a shallow plot device. I read this story twice, taking extensive notes, and I could tell you for a fact, it is never explained why Jet likes Fluttershy, aside from, oh, he finds her attractive. In fact, there was this one moment that I thought was a wasted opportunity. In the middle of the story, one of Jet's repressed memories is triggered, and he starts to have a meltdown. Fluttershy is there to comfort him, and they go off to the park to walk it off. But right after that, you just cut to the next night, and I'm like, Oh, come on! What happened during that walk? What'd they talk about? You see, this would have been the perfect opportunity to build that relationship between these two characters. In order for me to care about this relationship, you need to show me some chemistry, some fluff, you know? A time when they just talk about their feelings and bond. Stuff that just makes you go, aww, that's adorable. Then there are the knights themselves. While I would say they're decently written, I feel like they're just a bit on the short side. I mean, Shouldn't these parts feel like they drag on forever? Tension building as we count down to six o'clock. You know, your heart starts pumping, you start waiting. It feels like it goes on forever. I mean, isn't that what the game is? How the... What the... The flashlight? What the frick is the flashlight? Oh, son. Then I have to talk about the twist ending. While it definitely made for a good oh sh moment, I feel like there should have been a lot more build up to it. Like I said, I read this thing carefully, and you only hint at it like twice. More like one and a half, really. It feels like the whole thing just kind of came out of left field. Okay. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, here's another thing I want to talk about. It's not that big of a deal when I really think about it, but it's something I want to talk about regardless. The crossover aspect. I love crossovers. I don't know why, it's just whenever I see two properties crossing over, I just get like excited inside. Hell, I managed to get through 600,000 words of The Wheel of the Butterfly after only watching one episode of Dan Versus, and I still liked it. But what makes a good crossover? Well, first, you need to examine each property and identify what makes it special. For example, two things that make My Little Pony so good would be the characters and the world, the lore, the setting. A good crossover will have elements from both properties, which is why, in my opinion, Five Nights at Pinkies is not really a good crossover. The thing is, Five Nights at Pinkies feels like a Five Nights at Freddy's story with ponies plastered on top. It doesn't have that pony essence to it. First of all, the world and lore of Equestria is never explored in this story. The whole entire thing takes place in the restaurant, and you never even mention magic at all. What about the characters? You need characters, right? Well, for starters, the animatronics don't count as they're only reskins of the Freddy's characters. Well, then we got Apple Bloom. However, her role in the story is basically small child who acts cute. She establishes that Jet used to work there and that people used to like him. Other than that, she doesn't bring a whole lot to the story. And that leaves Fluttershy, our only remaining canon character, who I feel is, well, how do I say this, miscast? I mean, why would a character who is known for being a shy, timid recluse who loves working with animals instead work at a frickin' pizza joint? 
Well, Jet actually has that same question. Why did you stay working here when you could have used your major and got that job as a vet that you always talked about? I don't know. After the incident, a lot has changed here. I don't know why I stayed. I hate to say it, but Polarshai just feels... <sighs> she just feels out of character. <coughs> <coughs> Oh. oh, I feel like a pretentious My Little Pony analyst. Ugh. From the way you describe her in this story, she sounds more like Pinkie Pie, seeing as she's the one who works in the food industry, loves working with kids, and she's been known to throw a few parties. So, yeah, there's just not a whole lot of My Little Pony essence in this story. And maybe you're fine with that. Maybe I'm just being the nitpicky little critic who hates everything. Speaking of which, welcome to Nitpick Corner, the part of the show where I point out weird things that, in the end, don't really matter, but I'm going to talk about anyway. And I've been talking for over ten minutes? Seriously? Well, let's hurry this up. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, according to the story, Jet murdered five kids and stuffed them into these robot suits, and apparently nobody ever found the bodies. I call bullshit. Have you ever been in a house with a dead mouse before? Just a small little mouse corpse inside the walls? You will know that it smells absolutely terrible. I can't imagine the smell those corpses would make after a few days. How the hell did nobody notice the smell? Those suits don't look insulated to me. Did anybody ever just open them up in the course of five freaking years? Also, Flash Sentry be like, Oh, you can't trust Fluttershy. She doesn't know about the robots. And I'm like, uh, Flash, have you ever thought about just telling her about the robots? I mean, seriously, if I was working and a giant freaking robot ate my coworker, I would be telling my manager about it. Oh, wait a second. I know why you don't tell her. You need to make Fluttershy seem like a caring and confident person. And by telling her this, she would shut down the restaurant, meaning there'd be no story to tell. Oh, okay. I see, author. You wrote yourself into a corner there, didn't you? Also, the locked door thing makes no freaking sense. I mean, what kind of door requires power to keep it closed? You know what you could use instead? A freaking lock! You know, they've invented those a few hundred years ago. You know, just put a few on there and bang a wham! Suddenly, you've got yourself a foolproof system. And don't you dare tell me I have to look into some weird bullshit fan theories for this Alright, I don't got time for that I need answers now. And why is there a freaking night guard in this series at all? It's a Chuck E. Cheese, not the Smithsonian. Have these people ever thought of just recording what's going on here and sue their asses in court? Because you could make a fine buck by doing that instead of working at their freaking place. Do these freaking robots need protection? Honestly, they would eat anybody who comes in the freaking restaurant. That seems like a pretty self-efficient system right there. This series makes no sense. This whole series is contrived and relies on stupid conveniences and expects you to just roll with it for stupid jump scares. What the? This whole series is stupid. Why the? This, none of this makes sense. Why? Okay. Oh. Hey there. Oh! <laughs> oh! Fuck you. F this game. F this game. Wow, seriously? You couldn't make it past one night? You do know you have to use that music box to f*** you. Five Nights at Pinkies has a lot of great ideas. I mean, the repressed memories combined with the Five Nights at Freddy's lore? I mean, this is some great horror material. However, because of the rushed execution and the weak development of basically all these elements, this story was not nearly as effective as it should have been. I wasn't really scared. I wasn't really engaged in the character or the romance. The whole time I kept going, yeah, this could be good. With a little more time and energy, I feel like this story could be really, really good. However, in its current form, I found it to be underwhelming.